Thank you so much, everyone else, for attending our forum today and welcome our friends both in Malawi and in, in Scotland. In our presence today, we are aware that we are having our Honorable uh, Deputy Minister, uh, sorry, Honorable Deputy High Commissioner to Malawi at the Malawi Embassy, Mrs. Um, Agnes Patemba, and we want to welcome her if she is in attendance, uh, that she feels welcome. We also like to welcome our Honorary Consul to Malawi uh, uh, in Scotland, Dr. Peter West, who is also in, in the presence. I've seen his name somewhere. I'd also like to welcome Dr. Joseph Nagoli. We want to welcome all our friends, all protocol observed. A warm welcome um, to everyone in Malawi and in Scotland. My name is Yona, <clears throat> Yona Matemba. I'm from Malawi, I, but I work here in Scotland. I work at the University of the West of Scotland. I'm a senior lecturer in education, but also I'm the director of the uh, doctoral program in education. When the forum met last time, we shared our intention to digitize the Scotland Malawi Partnership Directory of the Feather and Higher Education links between Scotland and Malawi. Some of you may have already seen this online, but we are pleased that this now has been digitized. So I'm pleased that this has been done, it's live. And I think this provides our members with what we hope is a useful opportunity to showcase their work. We recognize that from the last iteration of the PDF that was in 2020, there was much to update and to refresh direct the directory. So many thanks to Jade who is here with us today for doing the work to digitize the directory. And I think just for a brief moment, I'd like to ask Jade, just to briefly give us a tour of this, um, of this guide. Over to you, Jade. Thank you, Dr. Matemba. Hi, everyone. Um, really nice to see you all today. Um, so I'm just going to ch share my screen. So yes. here we are on the homepage um, of the Scotland Malawi Partnership website. Um, so I'll just show you how you can find the digital directory. So at the moment, there's a direct link in this, our latest update section. For, so for the next few weeks, um, you'll be able to access it here. And um, beyond that point, it can always be found on the Further and Higher Education uh, page on our website, which is via our members. And then to this drop down areas of the partnership. Um, and then within the areas of the partnership page, that further in higher education page. So you'll always find the directory here. Um, then we have this big block here, further in higher education directory, which we can click. Um, and it's really simple and easy to navigate. It has these four main sections, um, our forward from Dr. Watemba um, about the Scotland Malawi partnership and the directory itself. Um, and this final full section, um, which showcases SNP members who are involved in further in higher education links, but aren't necessarily universities. Um, so to click into the first section, um, as I say, it's super easy to navigate. You can scroll down each section and click to the next section and so on and so forth. And this top right corner, we have a contents list. So we can skip through the sections this way. So say I want to go straight to the directory itself. will lead me to this main page of all the universities. I won't scroll down this whole page, um, but say I want to find out a little bit more about the University of Edinburgh. I can click here to find out more, which will open a new tab. And then I can navigate by the various projects. So say if I want to find out a little bit more about Project 9, the mascot project, I can click here and I'll zoom down to that project and, and so on and so forth. Um, and the final and fourth section of the guide um, is all about those other members who um, aren't necessarily universities, but are involved in further and higher education partnerships. So again, if I wanted to find out, say a little bit more about Orbis, uh, Orbis expeditions, I can click here and it will whiz me down to that section. Um, coming back to the, the home page here. Um, and yeah, I think that's a quick uh, whistle stop tour. Uh, thanks. Thank you so much, Jade. And, and I'm sure that our colleagues and friends from Malawi can also add also to this directory as well. So it will be very important to make sure that we also have you know, the new entries from Malawi in, on, on this uh, directory. So thank you so much, Jade. A link has been added to the chat box, if you noticed on your screen, um, and which provides a template for how this can be done. So please do contact us or contact Jade uh, or just contact the Skodamala Partnership if you want some entries to be added to the directory. That should be fine. Now, in terms of our forum action plan, we have an ongoing commitment to 
the following things. One, the building the Skoda Malai Partnerships network of senior contacts across funders and key strategic partners. Continuing to pursue the issue of accreditation, whereby too often Malawian qualifications do not have the appropriate UK equivalents, noting in my recent articles. Those of you in Malawi, you may remember that in 2019, I published um, an article, uh, a two-page article, on the 6th and on the 13th of April, and where I did raise concern about the very issue of um, Malawian, Malawian degrees and the problem of, um, of quality and how they are assessed elsewhere. <clears throat> the third point is exploring the possibility in supporting members to build a consortia bid, bringing together a number of Scottish and my universities for future funding uh, programs. And something for Malawian colleagues as well to look forward to and also to show interest. Connection to, in connected to that, in our last forum, we heard from Dr. Tracy Moss uh, of the University of Strathclyde on a possible consortia bid. If you are interested in feeding in views and in volunteering to be part of a working party, please just let me know or any of members of the Scotland Partnership that you're interested and will pass your name forward. We shall be sending out a survey following today's meeting to identify the themes and areas in which members would like to see collective working, enhancing collaboration, coordination, capacity building to make the biggest difference to the greatest number of people, both in Scotland and also in Malawi. In today's forum, co-designed by the Malawi Scotland Partnership and the Scotland Malawi Partnership, we want to listen to Malawi's priorities. And I'm delighted that Dr. Joseph Nagoli, the Director of Knowledge and Learning with Malawi's National Planning Commission, is also joining us to provide us an update. We'll also hear from the Malawi, uh, the MASP CEO, uh, our sister in Malawi, uh, the CEO Stella Masangano, on a very positive idea to create a Malawi Research Coordination Unit. And there will be time for question and answer and discussion around this. And personally, I do support this as well. So I think this is a, a brilliant initiative. Gender mainstreaming is, as we know, an important issue. And I'd like to invite David Hope Jones of the Scotland My Partnership and Stella Masangano of the Malawi um, Student Partnership to provide an update on the, on the organization's approaches and for the forum to consider, um, uh, to consider bearing the gender mainstreaming has on our actions. Of course, as far as time will permit, we will also benefit from updates uh, from our forum members, most of who are already here, their partners on the progress and, and the offers and the kind of work that already do in Malawi. It will be quite quick, probably 60, 60 seconds per member, but we'll see what we can do. Finally, our plan today is that at the end of the meeting, you will see on your screen two poll questions which will ask you to answer. These are quite quick questions. And thanks to Craig for organizing this. And you see these questions and you could uh, answer those questions quite quickly. These do help us to improve our services. So thank you so much. And I think I'm really pleased that today <clears throat> we are here gathered to hear both colleagues in Malawi and in Scotland to discuss issues of education, especially higher education and other issues that surround it. Stella, if you can come in, if you could update us please about the idea of this research coordination unit. Okay, uh, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, my name is Stella Masangano uh, from Malawi Scotland Partnership. Indeed, uh, we, we are proposing that we should uh, set up a Malawi coordination unit for research. Not necessarily that uh, it would be like an office, but like coordination committee whereby um, all those involved in uh, research between Malawi and Scotland, those ones who are based here in Malawi, should be able to speak each other, to coordinate among ourselves, and also to, uh, to share the best practices as far as research, as well as to prioritize. That is, uh, at Malawi level as a country, we should speak to each other to say, what is University of, what is Luana doing? with a Scottish university, maybe what is MAST doing, what is University of Livingstonia doing, so that when we are speaking to our colleagues in Scotland, we should be speaking with one voice. We should be sharing our best practices. We should say, okay, these are the priorities as far as Malawi is concerned that we should ask our colleagues in Scotland that we should zero in and research on that. 
Uh, specifically, that is why we are asking that we set up our committee on research, specifically to look at Malawi. Thank you. I know there's limited time, so I should not speak too much. Unless you yeah. have questions uh, or, or a comment. Thank you. Thank you so much, Stella. Uh, and I think you, you have really, uh, I mean, the that initiative is really very much welcomed. And I think the, what you're proposing really something welcome. So we will come to it we, we, if we can ask if Dr. Joseph Nagorio, his representative, is he here? So that we could ask them if they could share their thoughts. Um, yes, I'm, I'm here from yes, National Mr. Planning yes. Commission. Indeed, Mr. Kamanga, you are welcome to speak. Yeah, I'll, I'll just briefly speak about um, the national research agenda that we are developing. So it's to do with uh, research priorities um, that uh, uh, we want to, to help develop um, so that um, the practitioners or the researchers on the ground, um, they should be able to select research themes that they think that um, they can work on depending on the, uh, the areas of expertise. Um, so um, currently, um, where we are standing in terms of uh, developing uh, the national research agenda um, is, is, is that um, uh, we just held um, a validation workshop two weeks ago um, to solicit comments on the draft um, national research agenda that we are developing. And um, uh, we, are, we are now in the comments uh, um, in, in, the, in, in the document. And we're expecting that um, the final uh, draft document is going to be ready um, by end July. And we are, we are doing the, the work of um, developing the, the, the national research agenda in collaboration with uh, the National Commission for Science and Technology. Then after that, we are going to uh, organize a dissemination function. I think it's going to be hybrid. Uh, physical and 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 virtual, but we haven't yet established the date when we are going to do uh, the dissemination function. I think at the, the dissemination function is also going to serve um, as the launching function for the document itself. Um, so basically, at, at the National Planning Commission, what we want to do is uh, to coordinate uh, the national research program in Malawi. We want to to have um, research activities that are speaking to the research needs uh, of our new national development vision, which is uh, um, the Malawi 2063. And um, um, in, in, in the national research agenda, we, we have developed um, through a consultative process, we have come up with uh, different research themes uh, for the different focus areas under the pillars and enablers of MW 2063. As Mr. Makamanga was speaking there and sharing us the the priorities uh, of the Malay government on research. I think once he's able to rejoin, he should be able probably to, to proceed on that. But I think good thoughts that are coming from there in terms of uh, planning uh, for what's happening from the side of the Malay government. Um, if we, when you, as we wait for him to join, I just wondered whether I could open the floor at this time for uh, questions and answer depend both on what the Malay government is presenting and also what the MASP is also presenting in terms of these plans for research in Malawi. If, we, if I could open the floor there for questions. I could start, I had a question for the Malay government in terms of planning the, um, the, 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 pl the, 19, the, the 2063 is a great plan, but I wondered whether there are shorter, shorter term or short term plans as well. No, no, just on a long-term plans. The, the ones that are immediate that ought to be done now rather than waiting until 2063. Probably I, I could ask Stella the same as well what your reflections are. Yeah, uh, thank you so much, uh, Doctor. Um, if you follow what uh, Malawi government has done on the national priorities, all the priorities, what, what they've done is they've broken down them. They have, I think, this is it three year plans? I'm not sure in terms of duration, but they are broken them either three year terms or or ten year. Yeah, they are not specifically looking at the uh, at the 2063. No, thank you. Thank you very much. 
if I if I could invite others to feed into the questions and discussions, please just raise your hand and just let us know that you'd like to ask a question or to contribute to what has just been shared so far. Uh, Mr. Kamanga, yes, please you can come back. Thank you very much, sir. Um, I had a problem with my internet connection from this side. That's fine. Okay, um, so I was saying, yeah, so I was saying that um, um, the, the contents of, uh, of the national research agenda include um, research themes. So these research themes are broad research areas uh, for the different focus um, areas of the pillars and enablers of uh, the MW 2063. So what we want is that um, um, from, from these research themes, different institutions, they can come up with different research topics that are um, speaking to the research needs uh, of a particular focus area. And uh, the numbers and, and, and builders of, um, uh, of the MW 2016 was saying that um, here in Malawi, we have these priority research areas are going to be guided by the national research agenda. Then uh, um, the researchers here in Malawi, they can sit down with the researchers, um, let's say in Scotland, and, um, and, and uh, discuss how best the researchers in Scotland, they can help um, in implementing different research activities that have been identified here in Malawi. But uh, the outcome by the end of the day is that we have to um, help solve a particular research need here in Malawi that is um, speaking to uh, the national development. Um, um, vision, which is uh, uh, Malawi 2063. So briefly, uh, this is what um, I can share with you from the National Planning Commission. Thank you so much, Mr. Kamanga. Of course, you broke up a little bit, and again, also some parts probably people couldn't pick very quickly because of the uh, instability of your internet. And uh, we wonder whether you could send your PowerPoint or a document that you have and shared with the members here. Is that okay? Uh, yes, I'll, I'll, I'll do that. I appreciate that very much. Thank you. Uh, our friends here, um, I think these opened up a, a good discussions about research and priorities uh, in Malawi. And I invite members to contribute and ask questions to these brilliant ideas that are being discussed so far. While we're thinking of this, I also wondered whether our Scottish friends Scottish friends who are here, and I wondered for those who are involved uh, with projects in Malawi, these initiatives that are coming from Malawi, that your thoughts will be welcomed as well. Uh, it, it, you know, you know, the, the partnership is a reciprocal arrangement, so you know it's, it's two and four, uh, four and two. <laughs> so that would be interesting to hear thoughts uh, from our Scottish friends as well. Uh, Mr. Uh, Lusayo, please. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, uh, colleagues. Uh, just a quick question to following the presentation from National Planning Commission. I, I, I wanted to find, I'm from Zuzu University where I'm an associate professor of, of forest sciences. I wanted to find out whether they have already identified um, uh, resources to support the research agenda or is that going to be part of the, the process where, where, for example, uh, universities in Malawi, maybe together with universities in Scotland, will have to source out the resources to implement that research agenda. Thank you. Uh, okay, Sam. Um, let me respond to that one. Um, okay. Currently, what we are focusing on is, is, is on developing the national research agenda. We haven't reached um, um, a point uh, for resource mobilization yet, but uh, after um, launching the document, we are going to go straight into um, deliberations of how we can mobilize resources so that uh, uh, we should support different research institutions so that they should help um, to operationalize um, um, the document. Um, but for the time being, what we have um, as ready available, it's a um, um, it's uh, resources from um, the National Commission for Science and Technology. Um, they have um, the National Research Fund. So since we are working together with them um, in developing the National Research Agenda, 
we have also agreed that uh, we are going to make sure that um, the resources from the National Research Fund uh, are used um, to address the research needs that have been outlined um, in the in the in the national research agenda. Um, besides that, uh, there, there are different uh, mechanisms uh, that we we, are, we have just set aside that we're going to use, uh, you know, to come with uh, the the national um, uh, the the resource mobilization strategy uh, for operationalizing the national research agenda. Thank you very much. I mean, there's food for thought, I think, for all of us here because also, you know, to kind of uh, carry out these projects requires, you know, deep thinking about resources and, and, and for these things to, to work, as you were saying, Mr. Kamanga. So, and the members here, this is the place where we can begin to brainstorm ideas on these sort of things. So thank you for sharing that. Mr. Kirambo. Thanks uh, for, for recognizing me. My question was uh, on your presentation initially, you mentioned something pertaining to Malawian, is it degrees not being recognized in Scotland or somewhere there? So I wanted to say, um, what has been identified as the gap? Because if only we can look at that gap, we can also be able to look at our partnership to help in bridging that gap so that at least by the end of the day, uh, the degrees here are also recognized somewhere else. Thank you. Uh, thank you so much, Mr. Chirambo, for, <clears throat> for that question. And it really is a concern oh, for me. Okay. I, I didn't mention I went with him to the university. Oh, thank you. Thank you. So. you. Thank you. And that's a sort of concern for me, as I am from Malawi myself, so I'm, I'm, I'm concerned about that as at a different level, obviously. The article that has been shared, there's a link that has been shared. Please do click on it when you have time. And please do go through that report and the published article that came out of it. The reason I'm mentioning this is because there were quite a number of things that were unpacked in that report and also in the newspaper article to address the questions that you're asking, Sijirambo, in terms of what really the problem was. Part of the problem or the main problem, or at least how we came to know about it, was that uh, you know, NARIC is a, an organization here in the UK that assesses university degrees across the world. So when somebody applies to study at the U UK university, it's not all universities, most of the Russell Group universities don't, but most of the pro post-1992 universities do, because they're not sure about the, the quality of these degrees. So they send these degrees for checking with NARIC. So NARIC is that body that assesses them. And out of that assessment, Nari came to the conclusion that not in all, but in many cases, some of the Malayan degrees are actually downgraded. So for example, a master's is downgraded to like uh, a bachelor's degree, a bachelor's degree is downgraded to a higher national diploma and so on and so forth. So when we came aware of this, or became aware of this, we raised alarm. And so the report we wrote, and again, also the article that came out of it was sent to government offices, was sent to people we felt needed to, to pay attention to this. But I must say that I am personally disappointed that there wasn't very much interest to respond to that report or at least to ask further questions on what would be done. That report does suggest what ought to be done to be able to change the status quo when it comes to this issue. One last point I want to make about it, also based on that article that we, we offered, is that maybe the problem is history or historical problems in that those colleagues who are probably in high government offices, I'm just uh, you know, supposing this, came to the UK, studied at these uh, you know, historically big universities, ESEX and so forth. At that time, University of Malawi degrees were recognized. So there was no problem, but later on things changed. And so now that in Malawi we have all these new universities coming up, there's a need to look again at this question because it is indeed true. If you want to apply, say, to come to my university, University of the West of Scotland, the degrees will have to go through NARIC. If you apply to Aberdeen University, I'm aware of this, the degrees have to go through NARIC. And, and that also can cause problems for those uh, that are deemed that their, their, their qualifications are not up to par uh, with UK degrees. And that was the issue. So if you could just look uh, quickly at the, at the article when you have time, I think that would be very helpful as well. I see there are uh, 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 other questions here. Mind the panel, please. All right, thank you so much. Uh, my name is Mindy Panlo. I'm working as a research associate with Malawi University 
of business and applied sciences. Uh, firstly, I'd like to thank uh, the Malawi government for coming up with uh, some priorities on topic or, or research topics which you're supposed to, um, to tackle when you're doing research. However, I wanted to ask, uh, because most of the times when we're doing research, apart from uh, informing or impacting knowledge on people, we also want to inform policy development and practice. So I wanted to understand uh, maybe from uh, Mr. Kamamunga to say, what are some of the strategies have, which have been put in place to ensure that when researchers have done their research, they should be able to know and also be able to communicate to the uh, appropriate people to ensure that the research that they have been that has been conducted should be able to inform policy uh, and practice where necessary. I just wanted to understand what strategies have been put in place to ensure policy uh, development and practice. Thank you. Thank you very much, Minda. A uh, quick reply, probably from Mr. Kamanga. Okay. Um, so each and every year, we are going to be organizing uh, what we'll be calling um, annual research seminars. So it is through such kind of platforms uh, where um, um, researchers who are implementing different uh, research activities um, that are responding to the research themes um, in the national research agenda will be able to uh, present their research papers. And uh, um, um, through such kind of uh, uh, platforms, they will be able to, um, to, to share their outputs uh, with uh, um, different policymakers. And um, um, in, in, in addition to that, um, um, it has always been um, a tradition at the National Planning Commission where we, we organize um, different panels. So we can have um, um, different research programs um, that uh, are spearheaded by the National Planning Commission and uh, maybe uh, also being coordinated by the National Planning Commission in terms of uh, uh, funding for those kind of research programs and uh, having a selected um, 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 uh, a selected uh, 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 bidders uh, uh, of research grants through such kind of research programs and um, and th through the panel discussions that we'll be organizing under such kind of research programs, we'll always be um, engaging. Um, different policymakers and uh, different stakeholders um, that are also connected to the research outputs that are going to be uh, presented uh, for their input into different programs that they are implementing. So those are some of the, um, um, the strategies um, that we're going to put in place to make sure that the research outputs are not just um, um, sitting down um, on, on, on different tables and, and uh, and and uh, uh, and offices gathering dust, but we'll make sure, we'll be make sure that the research outputs are, are, are feeding into um, different research, uh, different policies that the government um, um, is implementing, and and also different programs that different stakeholders are also implementing. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Mr. Kamang. Emma, I see you. Could you hand up? Yeah, I just want to offer a tiny little story, a little case study to, <clears throat> that you might be interested in, in relation to what I see as a pretty racist approach to assessing the quality of degrees and educational attainments in different countries. So in Malawi, we have a young man called Gift Thompson, who's a very gifted um, young man, lived at the Stecker Care Home. We wanted to give him a sort of cottage industry scholarship to do a degree in public sociology at my own university. And I had to battle for a year to get GIFT accepted uh, onto a degree programme. And all the universities, nobody, because of this thing, they said, oh, well, a degree in Malawi is only the same as hires at school. <laughs> in um, Scotland and therefore 
um, the national exams in Malawi are worth far less than that and therefore we, he can't be accepted onto first year of university. After a year's battle, we worked out a way, we did get him accepted. And that young man that everybody said would fail has just got a 2-1 at Queen Margaret University. <laughs> so all the students we had from African countries spurred me on and said, he will succeed because he'll want it because he's from a very poverty experienced background. He will want it more than anyone else, he will succeed. But my goodness, did I have a battle to do. So if anybody's in that situation and they'd like a little bit of help from, from my experience of that, um, or you'd like me to contribute to anything, um, I'd be delighted to do that because we now have a massive success story. But my goodness, did it take a lot of energy to make it happen. Thank you so much, Emma, for sharing that. I, as a, as a director of the, our doctoral programs in education, can you imagine I didn't succeed? I argued, wrote to anyone who cared and anyone who's up there in the university. The answer was no. This is what Narika told us. I could not believe it. I thought I had sway because I had some, some, some authority in the office that I ran. And I said, no, 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 I know the degrees I come from there. I know the degrees from Zambia. I know this is very good. They say, oh, I couldn't win it. So this is the reason why I was also kind of in a way kind of inspired or forced in many ways to write that article to raise awareness that there's this issue that together we need to do something about this. But I'm disappointed that our colleagues from Malawi in government offices, so on and so forth, that we approached, they have not paid attention to this. And I wish they did. Because together, it's not one person, it's not only one Emma Wood, you, maybe you won that one. But what about the other battles that are going on, we don't know. So we need to have a collective kind of uh, approach to this so that all of us government, maybe government to government or institution to institution, then we can begin to raise awareness and say, well, our degrees are just as good. <laughs> I'm from Malawi, all my master's degrees from Chancellor College. So the fact that I work in Scotland, I didn't get my master's from, from any Scottish university. No, I did not. I got all them from Malawi. So. Uh, we know there's quality there. I'm not saying because it's me, but I know <laughs> it is. Uh, friends, thank you so much. Uh, I, I know that these conversations, so we can continue the conversation. I have something else on the agenda that I would like to invite Stella Masangano and David Hope Jones to speak about mainstreaming gender. Yeah, my colleague David will start, then I'll, I'll follow. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, David. Thanks, Yona. Thanks, Stella. Um, really just quite an open item in which really keen to, to listen to, to different voices in this, in this meeting. Um, just a very quick bit of historical context, and, and then I'll turn to, to, to Stella, my counterpart in, in Malawi, for her input. Um, I'm David Up Jones. For those who don't know me, I'm the Chief Executive of the Scotland Malawi Partnership, and thanks, uh, uh, Yona, for your, for your leadership and chairmancy in this, uh, in this meeting. Um, the Scotland Malawi Partnership has always had gender equality and, uh, and women empowerment at its, at its core, and at various times in our history, we've tried different things to really deliver on that as a, as a, as a key under, uh, underpinning theme to our work. Um, we had a, a very successful Gender Matters campaign some years ago, and from that we had a, a gender equality members forum for a while. But the view of that forum ultimately was that actually it could best deliver its work um, by mainstreaming uh, a gender equality focus across each of the SMP's uh, member thematic forums of, of which today's meeting is, is one. Um, uh, albeit this is obviously co-delivered, co, co co-partnered with, um, with our sister network, MASP, who we'll hear from in, in a second. So what we're looking to do with, with each of our forums uh, going forwards is to make sure that there's time in, in the agenda to really stop and, and, and think about what does gender equality and uh, women empowerment really mean in this, in this space. And so for this meeting, it's in academic further and higher education cooperation between Malawi and, and Scotland. I, I don't want to be too prescriptive in, in, in driving the conversation at this point, but rather, as I said, I'm going to turn to, to Stella for any introductory remarks that she wants to make and then really um, if you're happy, Chair, um, that there's sort of an open space that anyone that would like to feed into discussion and thinking on gender equality in this space would be really um, uh, appreciated. And specifically that question of what more can we do as the two coordinating networks in the bilateral relationship to really drive gender equality in, in meaningful ways 
in academic um, partnerships between our, our two countries. Um, but it is a partnership, and I'm very keen to hear from my counterpart in in, in Malawi. Um, Stella, over to you, and then I, then open space for for thoughts and reflections on on the question of gender equality in uh, academic um, partnerships. Stella, over to you. Yeah, thank you, David. Uh, thank you, Chair. Indeed, uh, gender issues are very critical. They're cross-cutting, and uh, if we don't empower our women, our girls then we are leaving behind a bigger section of the uh, development. We may not develop if we leave women behind. So as Malawi Scotland Partnership, we are calling upon our members. We are also asking uh, the uh, academ academia to also research on our gender to ensure that what we are trying to, uh, to uh, communicate to the communities is research informed, ev evidence based. So as Malawi Scotland Partnership, at the moment, what we are doing is we have um, a safeguard policy. Then we have embarked on a journey to build the capacity of our members who continue doing that. And also at community level, we have, uh, we have identified, identified partners who are on the ground, who are busy working with the communities, who are empowering women, those ones who are building our systems to ensure that we are checking out abuse of women, children, and any vulnerable individuals. Um, thank you so much. Unless uh, there are questions or comment, comments, thanks. Thank you, thank, thank you so much, Stella. Uh, David, do you want to add something? Because you said it was just going to be introductory remarks. Do you want to add to that? <laughs> really, uh I was keen just to, for, for an open space and to, and to little, listen to, to thoughts if, if anyone wants to share in this meeting now, okay. uh, or if not, um, to, to email, and I'll put my email address in, in the chat box, but really an open yeah. space to that question of what yeah. more can we do on gender equality, particularly in academic partnerships. We're really keen to make sure that there's tangible sets of actions that we can be held accountable for in all areas of the uh, of, of, of our work across each of the themes in the bilateral relationship. So really value reflections, ideas um, uh, now or, or by email. Thank you. Uh, colleagues, uh, as open space now, just for some reflections on this important question. Maybe I will start one issue that has always bothered me um, is the pregnant girls. And now I, I hear that because of COVID, uh, during that time of COVID, uh, most of the girls, quite a number of them actually became pregnant. And I wondered on the ground, and I asked my colleagues in, in Malawi probably because I've been away for a while, but those in Malawi to see what's been done to support these girls who fall pregnant and, and then, you know, everything from there, it just, just uh, collapses for them. W what is happening practically? What can be done practically to help these girls? Yeah, uh, thank you so much, doctor. Indeed, uh, during COVID time, I think people had too much time and uh, of course a lot of girls got pregnant. So um, speaking uh, in the meantime, we had uh, the government, we funding from the World Bank at national level, they suited um, gender assessment that also uh, has uncovered that indeed a lot of girls are dropping out of school because of preg pregnancies. So to address that, uh, what is happening is, um, they are trying to, uh, to, to encourage these girls to go back to school, to support them so that they go back to school. And also um, a number of organizations uh, at high level, maybe uh, like FCDO, they are meeting to discuss on uh, strategies, how we can assist or how we can empower women so that uh, they are in uh, decision-making uh, positions so that maybe we can also assist those ones who are most vulnerable so that maybe they are empowered and be able to speak and be able to, uh, so that they can go back to school and so that they are able, they're empowered and be able to do things on their own or to assist their communities. Thank you. Uh, thank you. Mm, thank you very much. So th thank you to hear that. I mean, really glad to hear that something is being, being done. I'm Rose worried about the village girls, you know, you know from a privileged home. So I'm glad to see that something at least being done, but I think we can do more. I see the hand from our, our honorable, honorable deputy um, high commissioner. 
uh, Justice Patemba, please. Um, thank you. Thank you very much, Dr. Matimba, for this meeting. Uh, I just wanted to, to make a contribution regarding the question that has been raised by David uh, Hope. Um, gender issues and education. Uh, I don't know whether we can have a scholarship fund where we can help girls. As, as you've right, right to put, girls uh, in prevention, not only that, I'm, I'm, I'm also having a background where working with the courts, you deal with cases of, of deformment and all that. And I, 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 I know there's uh, the big cases where person that have been involved now after you've rescued a girl from uh, being a victim of defilement. There are some girls who get pregnant, they'll have children, but they'll still want to go back to school but they do not have school fees and they do not have uh, any support, financial support for us to maintain in schools, for us to maintain them in schools. And um, also some girls who after writing the MSCA, they would still want to continue. They may not have an opportunity to go to the University of Malawi, but they would want to do maybe courses like in nursing, in IT, in all that, but they don't have the financial capacity for them to, pro to progress with their, with their education. I don't know what we can do for such girls because it's, it's a bigger number. It's just a few percentage of girls who manage to go to the University of Malawi, but a, big, a bigger population of girls do not uh, uh, qualify to go to the universities and how do we help them? Do we just leave them at that stage or we can still help them to take them further? At least they, they get uh, uh, a diploma in nursing or a diploma in IT, in whatever course. I'm actually struggling currently paying for a certain girl who is pursuing nursing, but uh, uh, the fees are, are high and personally I have a lot of responsibilities and um, and you say, who else can come in and help such girls? Because that is going to contribute to the uh, to have more girls who are educated, and then it's going to to raise the literacy level of 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 of, of, of level literacy levels in Malawi. So that's something that I, I don't know whether there's that possibility of coming up with a, a, a trust fund that would specifically help girls who are struggling with school fees so that they can pursue their education. Thank you. Thank you so much, Deputy High Commissioner, for, for your comment. I mean, these are really concerns. These are practical things that really we have to think about and do something about as well. I still live in Isbanda, and after that, David Hope Jones, uh, for your comments or questions. Uh, thank you so much. I hope you're able to hear me. Yes, loud and clear. Okay, thank you. Um, I'm living in Isbanda from Luana, and I just wanted to contribute. Um, with uh, based on the knowledge that I have, but uh, I think last year there was from the higher education point of view, the National Commission for Higher Education uh, started an initiative that uh, as universities and uh, institutions of higher learning, we need to have a policy uh, on, on to manage these gender issues that, that we are talking about. And so there was a whole program that encouraged the institutions to develop policy documents that can guide uh, how we manage these issues. And I know Luana and many other universities have those policies. And the, like from our institution, we've even moved further to start implementing some of, um, uh, based on the, the guidance from the, the policy, we have got like a strategy to ensure that uh, these gender issues and challenges are managed. Uh, so it includes issues to do with gender-based violence uh, in institutions uh, for both uh, staff and students. So th there, ha there are mechanisms that have been put in place that can help um, uh, the victims, but also even uh, uh, to be more of preventative on some of the, the challenges, but also uh, open uh, uh, room where victims can be able to report and get assistance depending on the, the challenge uh, that they're facing. And I'm sure the, such policies can also be applied even uh, in partnerships and they can also help even in the establishing initiatives to, to support more like for those uh, victims that may need further support, whether it's monetary support 
or just a place or just someone to, to, to provide counseling services and the like. So I wanted to say that there are, at least there are structures that are being put in place to ensure that these challenges are being addressed. Uh, thank you. Thank you so much for that, um, my band. Thank you so much, I appreciate it. Uh, David, I see your hand up, please. Could I invite you? And after that, I'll invite my Kalamba to come. Thank you. Thanks very much, um, Dr. Matemba. Um, just quick response to, the, to those two really uh, helpful bits of input to Justice um, Matemba. Um, I hear you loud and clear, and, and certainly that's something we've we've heard an, an, an awful lot of um, the, the need for, for scholarships, particularly for um, uh, young women in, in this area. Two of our members, I'd, I'd flag up the, the Mami Martin Fund uh, and the SOCO Fund to offer specific scholarships. Um, the former, I think, for secondary education, the latter for higher education. I'll put links in the chat box in a moment to them. The other thing I, I would flag up is, I should emphasise, we don't speak for the Scottish Government, we're independent to all three governments, Scottish UK and, and Malawian. But we were in a good meeting to, to this morning with um, Scottish Government officials, and they were really um, talking about their forthcoming Women's Empowerment Fund, for which we understand um, half a million pounds will be available um, for applications, um, not from Scotland, but from Malawi, for, for, for small Malawi organisations to be able to apply for projects in that area. So we're really excited about that. We're keen to work with the Scottish Government and of course with our partners in Malawi, MASP, as those plans develop for that funding pot. We understand that it will be live in 2023 and we're encouraging the Scottish Government to, uh, to put as much information as early as possible so small organisations in Malawi have time to build their capacity, listen to communities and develop really strong uh, projects that will, that will support uh, uh, gender equality. Um, to uh, Leibniz uh, Bandit Luana, thank you very much. I think it's a really useful point and, and my proposal uh, in, in response to, to your helpful point that, that all Malawi institutions actually have to have a, a, a gender policy and, and those structures in place. I think there's a really useful thing for us to do as a coordinating network to share those documents. So what uh, we will commit to and endeavour to do, and it'd be wonder if, wonderful if, 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 if Leibniz you can help us with this, is to is to look at uh, collecting and collating each of those policies and maybe putting those into the online uh, further and higher education directory that Jade was talking about earlier on. And that way, where there are new academic partnerships between Malawi and Scotland, we're able to say, how do we fit this into those uh, gender equality policies and structures in the academic institutions in Malawi, which is, is so important. So it'd be wonderful as we contact you after this meeting, if people, if friends could, could, could help sharing those. And if you're joining today's meeting from a particular institution in Malawi, it'd be wonderful if you could put in the chat box or send me an email, David Hope Jones, details of where we can find those different policies. Thanks ever so much. Thank you. Thank you so much, David. There was a hand from Mike Kalamba, I think. Okay, no, what I wanted to comment on uh, what uh, the, the, the High Commissioner was saying uh, in yes. terms of uh, girls drop school because of fees issues. Um, yes. I wanted to comment that to say it's very really pathetic. Uh, currently, like here at Nusus University, I just wanted to give that as an example where right. uh, in my department I have a number of girls, some of them have already dropped off from school because of fees issues and uh, when you look at them they are very capable girls who whom after possibly uh getting the education would have us their families as, as well as a country as a whole but then they're going back home just because of lack of fees and uh, sometimes it becomes difficult myself being the head of the department i don't know where to touch so that uh, we can be able to assist uh, these girls so I was really looking at it that possibly, as we're looking at mainstreaming gender issues, uh, we should really look at how we can be able to find some uh, some cash to assist those who are lacking fees. Thank you. Mm. Mugambe, thank you so much. Very, quite um, a quite important contribution. I think this is, uh, as a first lady, when she came here to Scotland and you saw some, what, what, some things in the chat as well, she did also emphasize this problem and also what she's doing to try and address this issue. But it seems that this issue, I think, is, is much, much widespread. So I think all of us collectively thinking about it probably and coming up with ideas, practical things that can be done. Maybe probably that could be the way forward. I see that, um, uh, Matero, could you come in, please? 
Yes, sorry, Malawi happened to my internet. So I'm <laughs> Materon Kalamba. I'm based in Zomba, University of Malawi Psychology de Department. So I'm sorry if I'll repeat what uh, Livness uh, said, but I just wanted to emphasize that in all this fight on uh, girl education, higher education, mental health issues are grossly ignored. First of all, there are no psychosocial support structures for these young girls. So you're talking of a girl who's trying to get back to school. They don't have the mental health coping resources to adjust to just being a new mother. They are not resilient enough. And this uh, pregnancy is also happening in a context of you know, intimate partner abuse. I worked with Titets and Kanza with girls who are exposed to violence and they're usually young girls. Mm. And a larger part of it is the psychosocial support aspect, teaching them how to cope. And even at the university, the problems that we're seeing, especially in young girls, the sexual, you know, they're sexually harassed and even the financial issues that they're facing that are driving them to be in relationships where they're more taken advantage of need psychosocial support. I've been swamped to my neck, counseling students hours on end, mm. you know, but th there's no structure in our universities for mental health support. So, and even with the COVID, so just in short, mental health support should be incorporated in, in all these efforts. Otherwise, we're really looking at a, a time bomb here. Psychosocial support in these interventions should be at the forefront. Thank you. No, that's very, very helpful. So thank you so much, my camera, because I think what you're just raising could be one of the things that we should probably draw as one of the themes and issues to look at. I, I think really, really quite important point that you make there. Uh, uh, well beyond you know the issues that we have already addressed here of poverty among his girls, pregnant early pregnancies, abuse of girls, but also what kind of psychosocial support can we provide, or at least the universities to think about providing. And I think that's an important point. Thank you so much for sharing that, Mr. Kaponda. Is that a legacy hand or is it a new hand? Yeah, that is a new hand. Okay, go ahead. Yeah, yeah, I have an issue here. I've been just listening to everyone who has been speaking here. Mm. All what I can say, I've seen that most of the issues you're just talking about universities, universities, these universities, but you are undermining those students from vocational colleges because, as I can see, the goals of Malawi to develop and grow, we need to stay focused to those students who are coming from technical schools because these guys are innovative and creative. Because if we can say for Malawi to develop, it's not always we'll be talking about researches that have been carried out by university students only. No, we have to take an overlook on what these students are doing also in the vocational trades, because there are a lot of students that are doing things like they are now they're learning technical works like mechanics, electronics. That's all what I can say. That's why I yeah. say we, we should also see on this other side with all these students, because they're in vocational colleges, they are there because they lack lot of money so that they can go and pay me for the investors that's the reason they divert their way into the technical colleges so from there the technical colleges if they can find a chance like for scholarship so that they can go further with education on that that is there any program which is looking over to this one thank you no i think that's a point well made in fact our forum here uh, just to address some of your concerns the forum here is further and higher education that it does include uh, these tertiary institutions, for example, those under Teveta in Malawi, for example, even here in colleges, for example, not just only universities, but I'm glad that you're highlighting that we shouldn't forget that we have a greater number of our, of our students, not in universities, but also in these tertiary institutions. And I think that's worth looking into as well as an issue moving forward. So thank you so much for highlighting that. Quite a, we appreciate that. Any further questions from, from the floor here on, on this issue? This is quite an emotive and quite disturbing issue, uh, the issue of the suffering of girls. Uh, and, and I think it's worth really considering this. I know that we have said quite a lot, b b you know, other, other things have been said before, that's true, but the struggle is still there. So we still need to do something there. Um, any practical solutions from colleagues here? You could put your, your comments in the chat as well, please, as we, as we go on. I, I, I know that I'm looking at time now. So probably um, David and Stella, uh, are you okay that we could move on from this issue? Is that okay? Absolutely, thank yeah, you very that, much. That's fine. Okay. 
uh, thank you so much for, for the discussion around that, partic that particular and important issue. Now, I would like to invite uh, colleagues here who are representing further and higher education institutions for institutional updates. Um, please feel free just to come in for about a minute or so. If you could just let us know what you've been working on with your partners in Malawi or on any projects that you've been carrying on uh, between Malawi and Scotland. This is the time for institutional updates. While colleagues are waiting, I wonder if the deputy, the Honorable Deputy High Commissioner, if you don't mind, do you want to share just for a second some of the thoughts you have about, about the directory, um, because the director of needs, because that also speaks to some of the issues that we are talking about here today. Is that okay if you want just to briefly speak about that? Uh, thank you, Dr. Matimba. Um, we indeed uh, contacted higher institutions in Malawi, uh, three universities, but only a few of them. I think it's about five universities which have responded. And as you bemoaned earlier on, that I think bureaucracies in government institutions, it's, 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 it's really affecting implementations of, of some of the programs. So we tried to make a follow-up. We, we haven't gotten any, any, any positive feedback. And I think as we had agreed from our conversation, and what we need to do is just maybe just submit what we compiled and we start working from there. Maybe when people see that things are, are, are working, they may join in, you know, sometimes people just want to look for, for they just want to be stand by us until they see something happening is when they'll come in. So maybe when they'll see that some, things are happening with the other universities, maybe they may join in. So we were a bit busy with the Chogam in Rwanda. Now that we're done, we should be able to submit uh, early next week, the directory that we have, we have compared so far. Yeah, thank yeah. you. Yeah. Just to give colleagues, uh, thank you so much, uh, Deputy Commissioner, just to give colleagues a, a heads up on this, we are working in the background on what we call directory of needs. Maybe the word is we might need to change that word, but what we want to is to collect these thoughts and ideas on what Mbobo Malawian uh, colleges, universities, and even under Teveta, uh, these uh, you know, in institutions that train young people to see what can be shared you know, in terms of their needs and the things that, you know, good practice that they can share with our colleagues in Scotland. So we are developing that and we share with the Scotland My Partnership and Malawi um, uh, Scotland Partnership. We share with you once we have completed that so that we can also help update the directory as well to see, you know, who else is interested in this kind of um, um, uh, issues. So that's just a heads up to everyone else here as, as the Deputy Commissioner was speaking. Thank you very much. Emma, I see your hand is up. Ah, yes, I was just going to uh, sort of set the ball rolling with institutional yeah. updates as there was a big silence. So, yeah, I'm uh, from Queen Margaret University in Edinburgh. I'm also the chair of a small charity, Stecker Skills, which links with the Stecker NGO in Malawi. So we've been working on dialogue groups as an alternative way in which young Scots can visit Malawi, uh, and not as voluntourists or as white saviours. Um, but in groups that are led by poverty experienced young people from Stecker. Um, so as I'm talking to a university audience, um, we got a four star for uh, the rating of that in our, it was a Malawi and colleagues, the Westminster University, uh, Westminster government UK uh, units work. Very frustrating though that because of the Scottish government suspension of its small grants program, we are way back, and because of COVID has stopped the visits, we're way back. We're about to launch a new campaign aimed at the um, trying to stop the uh, removal of the dust uh, initiation camps and what happens there. And we're linking that also to dialogue. So we're very busy, but like maybe many other people, very underfunded and feeling a bit sad that uh, we've been cut off at the knees despite uh, having such great progress. Yeah. So a bit of showing off <laughs> and a bit of a moan. <laughs> but that's well, who we no, Emma, sometimes it's helpful to hear successes of others so we can be encouraged. <laughs> so it's, it's all good. It's all good. Thank you so much, Emma, for sharing that. Any other colleagues to share institutional updates, please? 
Hi, David. <laughs> I see your hand. Thanks very much, Fiona. I thought it might be helpful to um, just flag uh, a great project. And again, I, I can't take any credit for it uh, from the Scotland Malawi partnership, but I'm part of the, uh, I suppose, overseeing panel that's 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 following the, the progress of it. I'll put a uh, uh, the URL in the chat box um, uh, with with full details of it, but it's uh, essentially a collaboration between Strathclyde University, Mizuzu um, University, and uh, let me pull it up here. Yep. Just one moment, and the uh, Centre for Environmental Policy and Advocacy. The project's called British Colonialism, Marine Sciences and Fisheries Governance. And a quick layman summary, what it's doing is looking at a, a historical analysis of two fisheries from the 1950s in Malawi. One took a, a very um, colonially imposed uh, approach to the, the way that it managed that fishery, and one used far more uh, local um, knowledge and experience uh, and, and Malawi leadership. And it's juxtaposing the two and contrasting where those uh, fisheries are now in, in, in Lake Malawi, how those fish stocks are, are doing. And probably no great surprise to hear uh, that the fishery that was that was run uh, really led by um, local knowledge as opposed to assumed or imposed knowledge um, as part of the colonial project is doing far, far better now. Um, but it's really interesting. Um, it's a project that obviously has a lot of uh, historical analysis to it. It's collecting a lot of the oral histories locally, but also a lot of technological and fishery analysis of those areas of Lake Malawi now. I think it's a really useful example of decolonization in, in action, looking in, in really tangible, meaningful ways about what impact um, that some of the assumptions and ways of working of the past actually have had demonstrably negative impact. But I'll put a URL in the chat box where you'll be able to see in far greater detail what that project is doing. And that's going to be running for the next couple of years or, or so. And I'm sure that the, the researchers would be delighted to hear from anyone that wants to be involved in that work. I should briefly name check the people involved again because it's not me. It's the University of Strathclyde, David Wilson, Dr. Myla Gough. Gao and uh, Dr. Charles Knapp from the Mizuzu University, Dr. Elias Chowa, Professor Wapu Mulwafu, and Dr. Bryson and Comer, as well as the Centre for Environmental Policy and Advocacy. I'll put the details in the chat box. Thank you, Yona. Thank you so much. Thank you, David. I, I wondered now if I could ask our colleagues in Malawi, is there anybody else from our side who've got some things, some projects going on, or some, some thoughts they have about these kind of projects that would like to share this because it's a forum where all of us are here and we can hear and make the connections that are required or needed sometimes. So can I ask our colleagues in Malawi if they've got any thoughts around that? Anybody else who's working on a project or think of a project and want to share those thoughts here? Now I take it we don't have uh, uh, that uh, at the moment, but once you have those ideas, please do share them with us or share them in the chat later on or do write to us and then we can pass them on to the, the, you know, the people that you might be interested in uh, to collaborate with. And so thank you so much for that. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, that brings me to almost nearing towards the end um, uh, of our meeting today. Um, and it's so great to hear a lot of different thoughts about and around the various questions and issues that are being raised today. But I wanted to ask, if I could ask David um, to come in for some conclusions and actions uh, for the Secretariat. Thanks uh, ever so much, Yona, and thank you to everyone that's that's contributed. It's it's wonderful with the shift to digital to have um, such strong input from the, the Malawian side as well as the, the, the Scottish side. Um, just some very quick next steps from our perspective. My thanks to, to Jade at the beginning of the meeting um, for putting the uh, directory of further and higher education links, um, uh, briefing everyone on that. Perhaps while I'm speaking, Jade, if you'd be kind enough to put the link again in the chat box, just in case anyone's joined um, since then that they're able to look at it. I think the main call to action um, for our members in Scotland and partners in Malawi is to take time to, to look at that online directory and to contact us with your updates. To, to be clear, we haven't updated the content since uh, early 2020, but what we've looked is we've what we've done is moved it from a sort of a static PDF to something that's embedded and live on our website. <clears throat> that has the advantage of it's far easier for us to be able to update as we go. Um, so please do email any of the Scotland Malawi Partnership team um, your updates for any of those pages, and we will endeavour to do that. 
Um, my thanks very much to all who have contributed through this meeting about the priorities in Malawi. We will endeavour to capture that in the past event page. Um, uh, that'll be if you just go onto the Scotland Malawi Partnership website, click past events, you'll see it. There's a dedicated web page for today's meeting. We'll put all information and hyperlinks uh, and a summary of that Malawian input um, to that page. We, uh, the Scottish side, will look to represent those priorities and the voices we've heard over the last hour and a little bit um, in, in the coming months uh, as we coordinate the relationship. My particular thanks for all of the input on the gender equality side of things. I think there's some really tangible next steps that we can do with that. Um, I've already had an email exchange with uh, Liveness uh, Banda, uh, who's kindly shared the Luana uh, gender um, policy. So we will look to collect and collate as many gender equality policies from Malawian and Scottish universities, I must emphasize that. So please call to action. Uh, if you have access to or know who we should contact in each of the Malawi institutions, um, and keen to emphasize that's both further uh, and higher education. I thought it was a really powerful point during this meeting on that point. Please do contact us. And I think it'd be really useful for us to embed those policies, those structures, and perhaps those contact details onto that directory. Um, we'll continue to share and update any other information we get. And just my thanks to everyone for taking part and Dr. Yona Matemba to yourself for sharing. Thank you. Thank you so much, David, and thank you so much, everyone else. Um, <clears throat> as chair, there's a poll just, just uh, on your screen. If you could quickly answer that, <laughs> we appreciate that. Helps us to improve our services. But thank you so much, everyone else, as David has said, for coming. And it's really wonderful to hear, you know, and to see our colleagues from Malawi, as well as also, you know, old contacts here in Scotland. What I would say probably as chair of this forum is that um, I'm, I'm pleased to hear that uh, for the MASP side, they are thinking of kind of creating a similar body like this to have a forum. And I think it's good to have such a forum in Malawi that can also coordinate all these universities, uh, colleges, the Teveta that we talked about earlier. So if you could have uh, a forum of this kind, it becomes much, much easier to coordinate, much, much easier to share good practice, much, much easier to share contacts um, with one another in terms of research, dissemination, ideas about research, funding bids and so on and so forth, and any other issues that really affect and concern higher education or further higher education, broadly as broadly defined. So I'm really pleased to hear that so that kind of discussion is ongoing. And I'm really personally, I will avail myself if, if, if needs be to be involved in, in, in any way that I'll be needed to make sure that, you know, you know, on the other side as well, we have such a forum that is functioning as well as where as ours here does. So ladies and gentlemen, in Malawi, please, I know it's very cold, I'm told. I'll be traveling to Malawi shortly, so I need to make sure that I bring my blankets because <laughs> I hear it's very cold there at the moment. But otherwise, sorry for the cold. Here it's slightly warm, uh, but for Scotland, that's good. Uh, otherwise, it rains most of the time. But otherwise, thank you so much to everyone else and hope to see you next time when we invite you to this forum or indeed a forum by the Malawi side of this partnership. So thank you so much. Bye-bye everyone.